In recent videos, I've been using a Hornby HM7000 TXS sound decoder in an AcuraScale Class 37 model. This has sparked a number of questions as to how well it works and what are the limitations. In this video, I detail the configuration that I've been using and what works and what doesn't work with this configuration. So it's time to take a closer look. Thanks for joining today's video. Let's start with the configuration. I've been using an AcuraScale Class 37 model, 37609, which is not a model I've specifically reviewed, but I did review one of the earlier Class 37s from AcuraScale, which did include its own inbuilt sound. In this case, I purchased a DCC model with the intention of adding a third-party decoder. And in this case, it's a HM7000 based decoder from Hornby. This is a 21 pin model. So you need to look at the 21 pin compatible DCC only HM7000 decoder or go for the full sound version, the TXS version. The next thing is your choice of speaker. You do get the default sugarcute speaker in the box with the various different cavities. And I was able to fit the largest of those cavities in one of the configurations that I used. Separately, I did use a bass enhanced speaker as well as an alternative. Now there are some limitations with the speaker configuration with the HM7000 decoder, so this is, it's important to know this. Its power capacity is relatively limited, and in general you should be using it with 8 ohm speakers. So uh, you wouldn't want to be using it with a 4 ohm speaker for example. You might get away with it at certain volume levels, but the power output on this particular chip is just not strong enough uh, to drive a 4 ohm speaker at a, a reasonable loudness level. So just be warned there, there is a limitation in terms of the speakers that you would use. Okay, so let's look at how you configure the locomotive with the HM7000 decoder. There's no need to install the Hornby power pack. The onboard uh, Stay Alive capability will work and work fine, uh, so no issue there. And you will see this when you take this off the track, you'll see that it actually retains the power for, you know, 10 seconds or so. So you should not install the Hornby power pack. You need to set the dip switches on the locomotive for a non ESU decoder, and that's important because this cannot access the extra functions that the ESU decoder can access. So you just, you basically need to dis disable uh, the ESU type capability. You need to install a HM7000 compatible speaker and one that will actually fit in the cavity. And as I mentioned, I was able to fit the larger speaker compartment uh, with the out of the box sugar cube. I did use a separate bass enhanced speaker as well, which was a relatively small form factor uh, bass enhanced speaker. If you want to use the larger ones, I think you're going to be relatively restricted for space. You are limited to using eight ohm speakers in general. Now what about the control? So people did ask me questions about this in terms of whether you can control under DCC and Bluetooth and both work and both work fine. So you have the same level of flexibility and control under either. And for all the running sessions that I did, I ran this under Bluetooth control. It's a much better user experience and I just found it much easier to use it that way. So that's fine and it is compatible with both. The only real limitations you'll start encountering is the lighting functions, so uh, you will have some limitations there, and I'll talk about those next. There are reductions in terms of the capability. So here we go. Uh, if you look at the functions, so the functions on the left-hand side are the functions within the HM7000 application that's running. Uh, it's got the F0 for the headlight, uh, which is uh, directional based. So if you're in forward direction, you'll get uh, these various uh, light configurations. You do have to, to kind of look at what this is because it's going to be not necessarily intuitive, uh, some of the, the lighting here. So if you're in the forward direction, the front white headlight will be on. And if you're in the reverse direction, it'll basically have the white headlight on in the reverse direction. And also it is it is directional dependent. Now, the next four controls are not. So these are point controls in, in a given direction. So F21 will turn on the front tail light, which most of the time you won't want to put on unless you're going in reverse and f22 turn on and off the rear tail light and so basically you've got that capability of controlling the tail light for your know, train mode type operation so that's a good thing that's a positive f23 can controls the cabin front panel so this is the panel the lighting behind the panel that's in the front cab so f23 will turn that particular feature on that's a, a nice feature probably not that most visible of features and F24 will turn on the same feature in the rear cabin panel. 
and you can have both of them on at the same time and similarly with the rear and front tail lights both of those can be on at the same time you don't have control over the cab light unfortunately and that's probably probably the biggest drawback from a lighting perspective and you also don't have control over the engine room lighting for example or the headlight so it's a compromise getting a subset of the lighting here did it bother me not really i kind of would like a cab light to be honest but I can live without it for the flexibility that it gives me in terms of the Bluetooth control. And I think, you know, we'll get into it at the end in terms of what these trade-offs are and what might work for you and what may not, what could be a deal breaker for you. So let's look at that summary. Uh, so basically the 21-pin HM7000, both the DCC and the TXS decoders, they will work with the Acura Scale Class 37 locomotives. The Stay Alive capability on the Acura Scale model will work as expected with these decoders. And you can use them in both Bluetooth control and DCC modes, which I think is, is very good. I found the motor control to be more or less equivalent to my experience with the pre-fitted decoder model, uh, the other Class 37, the one that I actually you, uh, did for one of my reviews. And I found the running performance more or less the same. There's no discernible difference. So I think, again, that's a, a good positive. Uh, now, there are some differences between an ESU decoder and a HM7000 decoder, so there will be some point, you know, very point items that will be different and may impact people. You need to look at the decoder ma manual for that. The main limitations, and I guess this is where it's going to be a deal, could be a deal breaker for some people or not, is the set of lighting functions as I went through. There is limitations there. If you can live with them, that's good. There's also limitations in terms of the speaker selection, uh, as I mentioned, and the, the speaker power output. And you really want to stay within the specification here or you risk blowing your decoder, it'll overheat and it will blow. So you really want to stay within these limits and not push them. In general, in line with that, you're going to have to use a slightly lesser capable speaker and you won't be able to get the same sort of power output on it. In general, the sound quality will be a little bit less. Now, the sound quality on the pre-fitted DCC sound models for the Class 37 from Acura Scale are extremely good. So they're really good. They're top notch. I found them very good. So this will be a little bit of a step down from that. But again, I don't necessarily know that for some people, whether that's going to be a huge issue versus the flexibility of Bluetooth control. So really, the question is up to you. Can you live with the limitations or are they just too much? In which case you should probably, and if you're looking for DCC sound, you should probably get the pre-fitted version because that's the most cost-effective model you can buy. Uh, you're probably going to pay typically a premium of 80 pounds, 85, 90 pounds for sound. Whereas if you do an aftermarket sound solution, it's probably going to set you back, you know, 110, 120. So if you're not going to go this route, then you're better off getting the sound pre-fitted from day one and not be playing around with anything. I found this was okay for my needs. I do like the flexibility of being able to take out this decoder, use the same decoder in another locomotive now, uh, if I'm not using this particular locomotive. So that actually is a net saving to me. It's an it's a increase in flexibility. It's something I like to do. And of course, that's something I can't do with the new Backman Plux 22 based models. And I'll talk about that in a separate video. I do have a bit of an issue with that. Whereas the 21 pin models, I can use them and I, I can use them on my older uh, Backman locomotives, for example, that I have previously done tests with the HM7000 and it works absolutely fine in those locomotives as well. So I'm going to leave you with a running session that's going to intersperse between the two different speaker types that I configured this with when I was running. So it's the same locomotive in both cases. We're running under Bluetooth control in both cases, but there's a difference in the speaker. And I'll highlight that as we go through the video and I'll interchange between the two. So you can kind of get to hear the differences in sound quality between uh, the two different speaker types. It's not a massive difference, but some people may prefer one versus the other. This will give you a bit of exposure to the flexibility that you have. That's it. What, what are your thoughts on using a HM7000 on an Acura scale model? Is it something you'd want to do? If, if you're into the Bluetooth control, obviously, then it may be something you want to do. And I think that's primarily the reason people will do this. I don't think the cost is really uh, large enough. The delta in cost is big enough to uh, be significant. Uh, but if you do want to have that uh, capability of, of Bluetooth control, then this is a really a, is a flexible option. And of course, you also have the flexibility because there's very easy access to the DCC socket on these locomotives. It's just a little lid on the roof, a magnetic lid. It just facilitates removing the decoder and putting it into another locomotive and reprogramming it for like a totally different class of locomotive. So again, that might suit certain people in terms of flexibility. You might be reconfiguring your layout for a different era, for example. 
And rather than having multiple decoders, you can maybe cut down on the number of decoders that you purchase and uh, do that. So that's a kind of a flexible option. That's something that I actually do to save a little bit of money uh, when I'm buying these models because these models are getting very expensive now. So that's it. Uh, hopefully this was of use. If you've had experience with using HM7000 on an AccuraScale model, please share that in the comments. If you've had issues with it, perhaps, please share that as well. We would good to share that with the community here. And I'd certainly be interested in seeing that also. Okay, thanks for joining today. Uh, hopefully see you on the next one. Uh, my next one is going to be a review of some AccuraScale wagons. You'll see them in the running session. And I'll be covering that off pretty soon as a, as a review. And the other review I have pending is the AccuraScale Mark IIs uh, have arrived, uh, my Northern Ireland uh, AccuraScale Mark IIs. So I will be taking those out of the box in the next few days and running them on the track with a suitable locomotive. And we'll see how those run and we'll look at things like the lighting, the running performance, etc. on those. So I'm really looking forward to those. They look really good in the box, but I'm going to be taking them out and giving them a thorough run through. So watch for that uh, in probably the next week to 10 days. Okay, thanks for joining today. Hopefully see you on the next one. And in the meantime, take care and happy modeling.